I bought every Lilabo fragrance so you don't have to. I have one full bottle and the rest are samples because I would be horribly broke if I bought a full bottle of every single release from this brand. Lilabo is a brand that I would say is fit for a hipster. It has a certain aesthetic and style it goes for. They know what they're trying to do and the audience that they're aiming for. In the past, I have been a hater for this brand. I have been a number one hater, and I have said some mean things about their fragrances. However, in these buying guides, it's very useful for me to cover all the fragrances so I can give a fair shot at these brands, see you know, if I really like them, am I being unfair to them, and hopefully give you guys a brief buying guide for everything that this brand has to offer. So this is a unisex brand for both men and women. I unfortunately couldn't get a hold of two of their fragrances. That was Oud and Iris because I couldn't find it on their website. I was wondering if it was discontinued. I couldn't find it on any of the sample websites that I trust either. So I decided to keep them out of this, this review. Otherwise, all other releases from this brand are in this video. I always cover the scent profile of these fragrances, their performance, how easy they are to wear, how many seasons you can wear them in, and whether or not they're worth the price. That might be a challenging bit for the Labo, the price tag. So that's something we're gonna get into now. I'm gonna go through all the fragrances. It's a very brief buying guide. I've only given one full wearing for each of these fragrances, so it's not a perfect guide at all, but it gives you a brief overview. That's the whole point. Let's get started. By the way, guys, if you haven't already, make sure to check out our own brand, Atrium Fragrance. I created our brand based on the fact that I'm a fragrance reviewer who's reviewed hundreds of fragrances, probably approaching a thousand now, and I've always felt like this kind of brand always needed to exist. I didn't see it happen, so I made it happen from ourselves, from our crowdfunding back on our Kickstarter days. So hopefully you guys will check out our creations. We've got many five-star reviews so far. All the lava fragrances mentioned in this video will be in the timestamps down below in the description. First of all, the only full bottle I own, Santal 33. I have been a hater for a long time of this fragrance. Santal 33 is a very dry, woody fragrance. A lot of people say that this is a sandalwood fragrance, but actually I think that's misleading. I think this is more of a cedarwood fragrance. Very dry, pencil shavings-like fragrance with a cypre, I think a cypriol oil, bright, aromatic green effect to it with some citrus is in here. This is a very dry, woody, almost pickle juice-like. I like to describe it as a pickle juice kind of fragrance. I'm not the only person who gets that effect from this fragrance. That has a very cool, I guess, bearded hipster effect to it. It's sort of like a man in, the, in a plaid shirt with a big beard would wear something like this. I think it's cool and artistic, but I find it so unpleasant. I personally do not like this fragrance. I just think it's it is, even though it's a warm weather fragrance, I feel that it's so intense and overpowering, even with two sprays, that it can really make, it makes me want to scrub it off, essentially. Um, so it's not to my liking. However, objectively, I do think the ingredients smell naturally high quality. I think they've gone for an interesting blend here. I think this is one of their more interesting fragrances in their entire brand in general still. And the performance is fantastic. Eight to 10 hours longevity with a medium amount of projection. This is the fragrance you wear in all seasons, apart from the winter time. It is manly, I would say more on the masculine side, bright, gets people's attention because it is still unique, but I hate it. I do not think it's worth the price, but I think it's still a point of contention whether or not you want to spend this kind of price tag on this fragrance. Bear in mind, there is a clone by Bentley called Bentley for Men Momentum Unbreakable, which I've noticed recently. I haven't tried it, but I know it exists if you do want a cheaper clone of this. But otherwise, you know, you're not going to get this kind of character from any other fragrance, so it's worth still checking out. I'm gonna give it half points for the price tag overall, so I'm gonna give it actually overall still a six and a half out of 10 because it still does get a lot of things right. Tonka 25, what did I write about this in my notes on my phone? Actually, you know what, let me spray it on this paper strip first to remind myself, as I said guys, I only had one full wearing for each of these fragrances. It's been a while, there's many of them, so I need to remind myself of the scent profile sometimes. So Tonka 25 is a cool fragrance. It's very much one dimensional though. It's very much, they are using Tonka bean in a high dose to make it smell like marzipan, which Tonka bean can smell like if you use it in very high amounts. So this is very much musky. I said there's a bit of light floral, like a fly floral musky touch with a lot of sweet marzipan-like character to it. I personally think this is interesting if you want a, a sweet and sexy signature. I think it's very much unisex. It's like the kind of person who wants a marzipan gourmand-like uh, fragrance. I think it's a cool idea, but I don't think it's worth the price. Longevity is decent, six to eight hours. Unisex right in the middle. I would give this overall a six out of 10. 
Neroli 36. This is basic synthetic laundry detergent style of perfumery here. It reminds you of Maison Margiela and MFK summer fragrances as well. It's that kind of style. It's Neroli, light florals, musks. And the musks here, as I said, are very laundry detergent-like. I think it's very basic. It's way too much money for what it's asking for. And from what I remember, the performance wasn't particularly great either. Overall, I have to give Neroli a 4 out of 10. I do not think it's worth the price, but hey, check it out if you want. Next up is Labdenum, which I found difficult to get from the official website. All samples are from the official website, so it's quite easy to try these fragrances out for you. If you want to do, do it, guys, you get each one individually wrapped up. Uh, but this Labdenum, I had to get it from another website that I usually go for for samples. And this is a very rich, elegant signature. I think this is one of their, definitely one of their richer fragrances that I would say wear it in the autumn, winter, and spring. It's labdanum. Labdanum, if you don't know, is an amber-based molecule that has some animalic facets to it. So this does smell a little bit animalic, and I think they mix a lot of iris in here. This smells like a very powdery, sweet, ambery fragrance with a very elegant, bright touch to it. I think it's unisex, leaning slightly feminine, but it smells high quality. The blend is definitely doing work. As I said, I do think Iris is a big player here, even though it's not listed and it's no breakdown, which is very surprising. It does have a makeup bag effect because of how high the Iris smells in here. I got six hours longevity from this fragrance, so average performance, but I do think this blend is unique. It's definitely worth sampling this fragrance. One of the better scents from the brand, I'll give it a seven and a half out of 10. I don't think you should wear this actually outside of winter and autumn, but in those seasons, this could be a very interesting signature. Tay Noir 29, from what I remember, I didn't particularly like this fragrance. Uh, sometimes these samples are buggy and they don't spray out. Okay, the sample mechanism is actually broke for Tain Noir 29, so I can't use it. So I'll just try to remember it by heart and by reading my notes. So I, how I described it was that this is a very dark and sweet tea, tobacco and patchouli fragrance. So yeah, I remember this being quite a dark fragrance, quite unique. But the issue for me was performance. It became a skin scent after the first hour and it lasted only about four hours in total. I think you'll enjoy this fragrance if you enjoy fragrances like Tom Ford Noir, but I would say just go for that kind of fragrance instead because at least you have performance there. I do not think this is worth the price. This is unisex in the middle and overall I'm giving it a six out of 10. Now, another 13. This one stuck in my mind definitely out of the entire brand. This was a bit annoying as well because the official sample became a splash on, so it was a bit annoying to apply, but I really like this fragrance. It is sort of a minimalist fragrance for the kind of people who want something like Baccarat Rouge 540, but you take away the spiciness of that fragrance and take away the sweetness, the vanilla sweetness of Baccarat Rouge. That's what that another 13 smells like. Probably people who enjoy Juliet Has a Gun as well, those kind of minimalist perfumes, Molecule 01, you'll like this kind of fragrance. It is woody, ambery, a musky fragrance that has a very pleasant aroma. It is very simple, but not too simple. It's got a nice bit of medium projection in here as well. And I think it's just a very pleasant fragrance. I actually do think this is worth the price tag from the brand. It's got fantastic performance, fantastic wearability. Wear this on all seasons, apart from maybe the winter time, it'll be the weakest time to wear this. For that reason, I really like this fragrance. Overall, I think another 13 deserves a nine out of 10, but you gotta try before you buy it. You must like this style of perfumery, but it's not gonna be offensive. It's a very safe perfume overall. Ylang 49. So if you guys know, uh, Ylang Ylang is a flower that has a lot of headiness to it. It's sort of honeyed, sweet, white floral, musky, it has some fruity nuances to it. Generally a more feminine perfume note. And I will say this does smell more feminine as well. It is white floral, ylang ylang with musks, maybe a bit of vanilla. It's very simple. It's got high quality natural ingredients, but a very simple blend. So why are you paying so much money for very basic perfumery, in my opinion? I've described this as dense, fruity, floral, banana custard-like is how I described it in my notes. It becomes a bit more dark and mossy in the dry down, a bit more soapy and clean. It's not bad as a warm weather signature. I think this is unisex, leaning feminine with 68 hours longevity. I would say that it's still not worth the price tag. I'm giving it a six out of 10. I just don't like how simple this smells. Rose 31. This is a very clean, powdery rose here. In the dry down, you can notice that it's a bit more of a dark mix of rose, sandalwood, and patchouli. These ingredients work well together really nicely, and then dries down to more clean woodiness later on. The issue was performance. Five hours longevity of the soft projection makes it not worth the money, in my opinion. It smells natural, but again, it's not worth the money. I'd give this a five out of 10. We've got Tay Matcha 26 now. I remember this being really underwhelming. Yeah, this is pleasant, but right away I remember this felt like a poor man's Silver Mountain water. So it's green powdery matcha tea note with some woody musks underneath. 
I don't get much of the fig note that's listed here. It has very similar vibes to Silver Mountain Water, as I said. Six to eight hours longevity with soft projection. It is a nice fragrance, but not worth the price in my opinion. It's a good spring and autumn signature fragrance to wear. Those two seasons, I think we should wear this. Overall, a seven out of 10, definitely sample before we buy this. Bay 19, I don't know what that name is. I don't know what that refers to. I've described this as white floral, musky, woody with a hint of patchouli and is surprisingly more on the masculine side. This is an autumn and spring fragrance. Once again, it's very simple, linear, it's natural, nine hours longevity with a soft projection, but in my opinion, it was not worth the price. I'll give Bay 19 a seven out of 10. Vetiver 46. So I actually quite like this fragrance, but I don't think a lot of people will. This is definitely for the Vetiver lovers only. How I described this was that it was very pleasant, soapy, slightly spicy, clove-like vetiver here with an ambery effect to it. It's smooth, nicely done blend. I kind of got vibes of Guerlain's vetiver, but brought into more modern times. So that makes it quite an interesting fragrance in my opinion. I think it's very pleasant to smell. Unfortunately, I only got 46 hours longevity, and this is more of a spring and summer fragrance as unisex leaning more to the masculine side. I love the naturalness of it, I love the blend, but that performance is disappointing, and it's gonna be very much an acquired taste that's going to decide how much you're willing to spend for this kind of blend. I'm giving this a seven and a half out of 10. I think it is worth the price for someone like me, but it really depends on the individual. It's not gonna be the case for everyone. Jasmine 17. Now Jasmine is often a white floral feminine fragrance note. It's not really used in men's perfumery often. And smelling this straight away, it smells very much like a Jasmine fragrance. Very standard, natural again, but it's Jasmine with some soft white musks in here. And on my skin, it was surprisingly indolic. Indolic means it's part of the jasmine constituents that it actually has quite animalic, almost fecal-like notes, almost similar to what civet can do to a fragrance. Jasmine naturally actually has that as well. Citrus, lavender, jasmine, indolic. It is natural, but challenging. And I think it's a tiny bit more masculine than I expected because of that indolic nature, on my skin anyways. A lot of 46 hours longevity, spring and summertime fragrance. It's an interesting natural jasmine fragrance, but I, again, I don't think it's worth the price. The blend isn't something that's mind blowing here. There are probably more interesting jasmine fragrances out there. I'll give this a six out of 10. Now we have Lease 41. I've written down as a nice, simple, white floral, vanilla, and musk. Spring and summer fragrance. Feminine, but a confident man could wear this is what I've written down. 46 hours longevity, well blended, natural, but not worth the money. That's performance is probably the reason why, and probably the simplicity of the blend as well. Again, six out of 10. Bergamot 22, another famous fragrance from the brand. I think this matches the popularity of Santal 33. Yeah, straight away, it's on spraying it. I remember that I found this very pleasant. I can see why it's so popular. It's a very photorealistic Bergamot note that lasts a surprisingly long time but it reminds me of another fragrance straight away. It reminds me of Goldfield and Banks' Bohemian Lime. I've said this is a pleasant, smooth bergamot with musk and a dry vetiver. Nice for the spring and summer, four to six hours, unisex, reminiscent of Bohemian Lime. That's what makes it not worth the money, in my opinion. I would recommend Bohemian Lime instead. But this is not a terrible fragrance. I think if you're somebody who really likes the scent profile, if you sample it first, it may be worth the money for you. This leans perfectly unisex. I will give Bergamot 22 a seven and a half out of 10. Patchouli 24. I think this is probably my most hated fragrance in this brand. I had to scrub this stuff off. This is very strong, dark patchouli. And I thought this was incense in here because it has a very strong smoky character, but actually it's got a strong birch note instead, which gives that smoky effect. It smells like something that the hippies would be wearing back in the 60s in Woodstock. They'd be burning up incense at the same time as wearing patchouli oil on their skin. It's very dark, very earthy, very smoky, very medicinal-like in its character. I always appreciate interesting fragrances, but this is very simplistic and just very unpleasant. I don't think they made this palatable enough, in my opinion. I can't tolerate this personally. I had to scrub this off after like four hours, but it seemed like it was gonna last well into the end of the day. Like I was getting eight to 10 hour vibes from this fragrance. So I'll give it max points in performance just because I cheated a bit, I feel bad. <laughs> But this is so strong, I do not think you should wear this outside of wintertime, which limits its wearability as well. And I don't think women could rock this unless they really want to stand out. I personally cannot give Patchouli 24 higher than a 5 out of 10. But hey, maybe try it out if you really want to try something very challenging for you. Fleur d'Oranger 27. This is a fragrance based around orange blossom, which is a very pretty, honeyed and orange-like flower, white flower that's usually used in women's perfumery. I think this is a nicely done accord for it. Very pleasant, bright, white floral, honeyed with some musks in here. 
It's simplistic but natural. I think for a woman this would be a very pleasant spring and summertime fragrance. What makes it a point of contention for the money though is the fact that it's about 46 hours longevity on my skin. It wasn't a standout perfume but it's nice natural perfumery. I'm gonna give this a 6 out of 10. And finally, Ambrette 9. I wore this recently and I struggled to get my head around this fragrance because I went and nosmic to this straight away. This is again, is similar to another 13 of being a minimalist perfume. Very much, I think a lot of Isoe Super, some musks in here, some white florals. It's very clean, very softly projecting and I seem to get 46 hours longevity on here on my skin but it was difficult to tell. I feel that between this and another 13, I would go for another 13 instead. I feel like this is the inf more inferior minimalist fragrance in the brand from what I've experienced so far. It is very deceptive because I don't think it's there on my skin. When I smell it up close though, it is still very pleasant. It's a very nice, light, musky, minimalist scent. But I just think you have to try it first. How much can you smell it on yourself? Because if you can't smell it on yourself, is it worth the money? Again, most of the Labo fragrances are 150 pounds. I personally do not think it's worth that price. But I think both men and women can wear this all year round apart from the winter time. I will still give this a six out of 10. And that concludes my buying guide for Le Labo. Overall, I feel that my favorites are another 13, a Bergamot 22. What is the point of Le Labo? I appreciate they came out in 2005. They are very much a niche house. They pride themselves on the fact that they're more artisanal, they do their fragrances handmade, they're more natural. And fair enough to them, their fragrances do not smell designer, they don't smell mainstream, they do smell like niche fragrances. But I think the blends are very simplistic. I feel that any amateur perfumer could sit in their room and make some of these blends themselves. They use a bunch of nice naturals, very traditional perfume combinations here. And they're pleasant, but they're not mind-blowing. The reason I don't think they're mind-blowing is the fact that I think, as I said, they're very common ingredients put together. The common combinations are used here that perfumers have known about for decades, and they haven't built a lot of these fragrances to be long-lasting and to project as well as you'd want from this kind of price tag. Back in 2005, maybe they'd be fantastic because they'd have less competition, but nowadays with the niche market being so populated with so many contenders now, I think there are definitely better alternatives. If you're the kind of person who likes natural perfumery, you like brighter perfumery, and you've got that minimalist, cool, maybe a bit of a hipster style to your fashion, those are the kind of people I can imagine wearing Le Labo. It's still great that this brand lets you sample their fragrances. You can't fault brands for doing that, so you can make your own decision. But hopefully this guide helped you guys out and let you guys know about what I think are the strongest contenders from this brand. Or maybe you've heard some scent profiles I've discussed here that piques your interest. So sample them out, guys. Try them out. Take advantage of the offer that Le Labo does on their official website for letting you buy their samples. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys have any questions or disagreements about what I've said about Le Labo in this video, let us know in the comments down below. Make sure to check out our other previous buying guides for entire brands, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.